an organization in Los Angeles giving second chances to a group of people often barred from the road to redemption. The results have been phenomenal. Take a look. What if we were to invest in people rather than just try to demonize and incarcerate our way out of problems? There's no other place in the country that serves more gang members than Homeboy Industries. We engage those that no one else is gonna give a chance to. So we have Homegirl Cafe, Homeboy Bakery, Homeboy Silk Screen, Homeboy Farmers Markets, Homeboy Recycling. We're an employment first model, and so they're learning how to uh, not only work on themselves, but also how to work. And in that, we create this community in which we all walk with each other to announce to the world that change is possible. We offer case management, mental health, tattoo removal. We have a whole education department and workforce development, which is really about moving them out of survival to a place where they can thrive and plan for a future. Homeboy kind of stands for something at this historic moment in our country where the people who are easily despised in society, the people who have been discarded and who don't count, here they count. Everybody's valuable. We can't live without you. the founder of Homeboy Industries, Father Greg Boyle, everybody. It is, first of all, meet Beth, meet Jack, meet Father Boyle, yes. You're amazing, it's beautiful. Wasn't it? I know. I know, cool. I literally had to stop watching because if I cry, my eye will die. <laughs> like, I, I was like, oh my God, it's so moving and it's so beautiful and it's so important what you're doing. Um, how did you come up with the idea for Homeboy Industries? Well, I was pastor of a parish, the poorest parish that had the highest concentration of gang activity in Los Angeles. So I had eight gangs at war with each other, started to bury kids starting in 1988. So we started a school, we started a jobs program. Then we started businesses because we couldn't find enough felony friendly employers to hire them. So, and now we're 32 years old and, and the largest gang intervention program on the planet. Wow, it's beautiful work you're doing. Um, I mean, Beth and Jack, what do you what do you love about organizations like this? I mean, honestly, I say organizations like this. this is the first one I only know like yeah. this. Like, what do you think about something like this? I just I'm just blown away. I think also like it's just so refreshing too to see someone who's doing so much good mm. during these times and have been doing so much good and bringing people together and giving them a second chance. I just, I have nothing to say other than thank you. You're amazing. <laughs> yeah. You're right though. It's such a blessing to have people like you on here now because it's, it's more important now than ever to have people that are such lights and such a dark time. So, I mean, e e Father Greg, even though it's called homeboy, you do help a lot of women as well, right? Yeah, you know, women make up about 5% of the overall gang population, but are certainly at our place, you know, f formerly incarcerated uh, women as well, as, as well as gang members. And, you know, and women, you know, have a lot of, uh, carry a lot of trauma more than guys in many ways. And, and so they require, you know, a lot of kind of uh, care and, and women work things out face to face with each other and, and, and guys kind of work things out shoulder to shoulder, you know, they can be working, making croissants in the bakery, but they're, they're kind of working things out, you know, generally. But the women, you know, uh, especially in the Homegirl Cafe, that's the place that they're most uh, kind of featured. Yeah, and you are correct. I love in-person talks. I don't want to figure it out on my own. Let's talk about it. We have two women joining us who prove just that. Let's welcome Connie and Jaquina. How y'all doing, ladies? Hi, how are you? I'm, well, I've been better, I'm wearing a patch, right? But it's okay. Um, <laughs> um, but tell us a little about your background. Uh, Connie, why don't you start? Okay, so I was born and raised in Northeast Los Angeles. I come from a single parent household. My mother raised us. Um, I got jumped into a gang when I was 13 years old. And at that time, I believed that I found my purpose. Like, I thought I knew what I was doing. And I looked around and like, I wanted everything that everybody else had and more. I wanted to be able to help my family. And eventually, you know, I was in and out of the system. I went to juvenile hall. I spent a lot of time in the county jail. Mm. And I never cared about mm. consequences until I was 31 years old. And I had six children and I was looking at 30 years in prison. And being blessed, I was able to serve four years in federal prison and come home. Wow. 
Oh my gosh. Well, well, Jaquina, how about you? Um, as for me, I was born in Watts. Then my mom initially moved to South Central. Uh, mine is kind of different. I was born with my mom and dad in the household. I had both parents, but my mom was kind of segregated off. She was a workaholic. Um, she wasn't affectionate. So when I turned 12, I got jumped in the gang. I went to camp. I did uh, four camp programs. That's when I first met G. And then I ended up getting out, uh, still was uh, in the gang running the streets. And then I ended up, uh, I was looking at 30 years to life. I ended up doing uh, three years off my seven. I've been out seven years now. And I also have four children. Wow, oh my gosh. So, so what was it like when you got involved with Homeboy Industries, Connie? Um, well, being that I made a promise to myself, and if I said if I was blessed to be able to come home and not have to do 30 years, that I was gonna change everything about the way that I was living. And I was introduced to Homeboy Industries, and shortly after, I lost my brother. My brother was murdered, and um, oh my God. I felt so much guilt and shame, like I should have showed him something different in life. And I realized I had one foot in and one foot out. I was still fencing the program, and I needed to make a decision. And um, I learned, being at Homeboys, that through all past experiences, if you learn from your experiences in life that it gives you great strength, like you can move forward in life. And that's where I was with losing my brother. And I had to learn from the experience. And today I'm a case manager. I have 30 plus trainees on my caseload and I'm able to see my trainees, walk with them through their journey because I've walked that path. Like I know exactly what they're going mm -hmm. through and how hard the struggle is. So Jaquina, how about you? So initially for me, uh, when I came home, I was just done with the lifestyle. I was like, I thought I had these friends. When you get in the gang, you think that everybody gonna be having so much loyalty and loving you. But once I got to Homeboy Industries, I went, um, I did an interview, I got hired in two days. I'm like, I don't know no job that would ever even hire someone that's a gang member, that's a felon with tattoos um, to even just give you a job on the spot like that. So once I uh, got into Homeboy Industries, I was there for a minute. Uh, I was a trainee at first, then I got moved to a supervisor. Then I graduated to be being with CORE, then I got bumped down, then I went to being a, uh, I'm in tattoo removal right now. And homeboys helped me a lot because once I came, I had seen Connie, I never spoke to her. Once I got there, I didn't really speak. We have these woman to woman classes where they allow you to speak, you know, engage with other women. I never was like that. So once I started being at homeboys, I started loving myself more. Um, I'm a hugger now, I never was a hugger. I don't like to communicate. I laugh a lot, I smile a lot now. I'm very different, I'm interactive with a lot of people. People that I think that I wouldn't uh, talk to, like Connie, that's my sister, like that's my road dog, I love her. I mean, cause y'all literally, usually you would have been, did I hear that you would have been in like a rival gang, right? So the fact that you're friends right. now is kind of remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh my gosh. I mean, how does this make you feel, Father Greg Boyle? Like, I mean, this is, these are just two stories. And I think what's incredible about this is these are two stories, but the domino effect from their lives changing, not for your children. Your children's lives will now be changed forever because of your decisions you're making, that impact. And then the list goes on. That's just gonna keep the yeah, domino I, I effect. I think this yeah. is how you break, break the cycle. You know, I think at Homeboy, they kind of found a sanctuary. Then they became the sanctuary that they sought. And oh, then, wow. then they went home and they present this to their kids. And then suddenly you've broken a cycle. And, that's, and these two women are my heroes. Yeah, and not only your family, but then also you said that, you know, your trainees underneath you, all these other women that you're going to run into that you're like, first of all, you can call out and say, you can do this, I did it, so I don't want to hear complaining. And then secondly, you can say, I am here with a helping hand, you are not alone. Because you were right. not alone and somebody helped you. And that's just, I think it's more powerful. I think in every everyone, Jack, Beth, we'd all agree, like, if someone's talking to you about something that you're going through and they've been through it, it means a hell of a lot more. <laughs> you know, like you can, I, yeah, and you don't feel like they're feeding you lip service. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, Father Greg, Homeboy Industries just received a huge honor. So can you tell us about the humanitarian prize? Yeah, it's the Hilton Humanitarian Prize and it's quite, it's the largest in the world actually. And so uh, we're quite uh, humbled by it and it sort of validates uh, kind of all our years of, and a methodology and a way of proceeding that's been part of this global homeboy network where we have 300 programs in the country and in the world that have been modeled on homeboy. Yeah. So I think they acknowledge the international scope of it and so we're quite uh, honored by it. 
Absolutely. So, well, you are all so incredible. I mean, this is, I, I'm so blessed to have all of you on this show. I'm so proud of y'all. I don't even know you, and I'm so proud of you. This is amazing, um, everything that you've, you've done. And, and that kind of change is hard. And, and it's, a, it's something that should be recognized and validated and, and honored. So keep spreading the love.